I mentioned in an earlier video about using motors with a robot or a microcontroller that the microcontroller itself cannot typically power the motor. You need a motor controller motor driver to sit in between the microcontroller and the motor. So today what I want to talk about then is using the Sabertooth motor controller with the Arduino to control one or more motors. So we have here on the screen a picture of the Sabertooth. This is a 2x12 Sabertooth motor controller. Two because we can power up to two different motors, control two different motors. And each of those channels, to each of those motors can draw up to 12 amps continuous without a problem. So let's see how we connect things up. So let's say I have a motor. I'll call motors M1 and M2. There is an M1A and M1B, an M2A and M2B. So we simply need to connect those to our motor. Now, if the motor, based on your program, you've got it programmed to go forward and your motor is going the wrong direction, you could change your software, or you could also reverse the leads here. Since this is for a DC motor reversing the leads of your motor, it's going to reverse the direction of that. We have two other connections. There's a B plus and a B minus. That is for the power supply to drive these motors. So if these are 12 volt motors, you need to have a 12 volt source connected up to here. If you're going to drive this at 16 volts, you need a 16 volt source. Be very attentive to the polarity of the battery and the connections here. It is important that you do not get the connections incorrect. So let's say we've got our battery sitting over here. There's my negative and then my positive. So we've got this side all connected up. Over on the other side, we have some other connections. This is for uh, the microcontroller end of the control. There is, and because of the picture, you can't really see them, so I'm going to write them. There is a zero volt connection. That's your ground connection. You have a five volt so on board this Sabertooth is a voltage regulator circuit. So taking whatever voltage you have here, let's say in my case it's 12 volts, and then regulating that to 5 volts. So you could use this to power something else on your board, your microcontroller, whatever is necessary, or not use it at all. Then there is an S1 connection and an S2 connection. These are the signals that will control motor 1, S1 for motor 1, and S2 for motor 2. So you of course are going to always want to connect your ground. And internally the 0 volt connection is connected to the ground over here as well, um, but never hurts to tie all your grounds together. So signal 1 is going to go back to your microcontroller. So you would have some port. Now it depends upon how you're going to control this. This Sabertooth can be controlled a number of different ways. It can use an analog voltage. In that case, then these would be analog ports that you would connect to on, let's say, your Arduino. If you want to control it using an RC type signal, using those pulses that range from a 1000 microsecond or one microsecond, I'm sorry, one millisecond to a two millisecond, which is 2000 microseconds pulse, you could, and again, those would be connected up to here. You can also program this using a serial port, and so then those signals would go into here as well. So that mode is dependent upon these dip switches. The position of these dip switches will depend on uh, control the function then of this saber tooth and what kind of signal you need to be giving it. So if you are using a serial connection, some of these switches, D1, 
determine the baud rate or the speed at which the communication is going to occur. And that would be important then that you have a matching baud rate on your Arduino. If you are using an RC type signal where you're sending pulses, then these switches need to be in a certain setting. You then need to be generating those pulses into these particular signal uh, connections. Likewise, as I mentioned, analog, you'd have switches in a particular setting. So if this were set up for controlling this with a serial port, we would then need to program this. So let's take a look at what we would do. We've made our connections. We've got our, say our dip switches in the correct positions. And for this example, I'm going to have dip switches one, three, five, and six on. The others are going to be off. This is going to set it up for the simplified serial mode. So I would need to declare some things. And one would be to define that I'm going to have a byte size variable. I'm going to call it motor control. So this is prior to the void setup. This is making my declaration. Because the when I'm using what's called the simplified serial mode on this, it is sending a byte that tells it what to do. And that byte can vary from numbers ranging from 1 to 255. So we only need 8 bits, so we've got to make sure we have a byte. If I were to use an integer, an integer is 2 bytes long, and that'll prevent it from working. So you need to make sure you declare this as a byte. Now, this byte controls both motors. So if I were to give it a value from 1 to 127, this is going to then be controlling motor 1. Where at approximately 64 halfway, that's going to cause my motor to be stopped. 1 would be full speed in one direction, 127 full speed in the other direction. So that's for motor 1. If I continue, if I send a byte that has a value of 128 to the 255, so the first half is for motor 1, the second half is for motor 2, and at about 192, that's the stopped for motor 2, 128 full speed in one direction, 255 full speed in the other direction. Other values will give me different speeds. So I've declared that byte here, and so in my other parts of the program, I simply need to send it that value. Well, I need to make sure since I'm using serial, that in my setup, I set up that serial port. So I would need to define, create my serial port. So I'm going to be doing this on serial 3. The Arduino that I'm using has multiple serial ports. So I'm using serial 3. And we'll do begin. And I'll put in my baud rate. My dip switches are set for 9600 baud, so I need to match that. So that sets up then that serial port. Now I'm ready to go ahead and use it. So in my void loop, I need to make and the motor move to control it and stop it, whatever I need to do. So let's say that I simply take my byte and I'm going to set it to the 
192. That would be stopped. All this is doing is setting the byte. Nothing's happened yet. So then I would need to send that to my saber two. So I'm using the oops, I'm using the wrong one. There's different ways that you can send um, information to the serial port. I need to make sure they use serial three dot write. So I'm going to send then that byte called motor control. So in this case, I send that value. That value in this case is going to make motor two stop. Let's say that someplace in my program I need to go ahead and make the motor move. Well, since I'm sort of without a space here, I'm just going to show you here. If I wanted this motor moving at a relatively fast speed, maybe I put in here a 250. Not quite full speed, but pretty close. So now when I use my serial 3 write motor control, it's going to send a byte that has a value of 250. If I were to take and instead of sending a 250, I were to send whoop, a 150. 150 is on this side. So I'd be controlling still motor 2 but now it's going to be moving in the other direction, not full speed in the other direction, but in the other direction at some intermediate speed. If I had changed this to a 50, then a 50 is falling in between the 1 and 64. So now I'm controlling motor 1. It's sort of close to my stop position, so depending upon the motor, and the mass attached to that motor, it would be moving slowly, possibly not even at all. Uh, if this were something a little bit smaller, let's say it were a five, then that's nearly full speed in this direction here. If I made this a, whoop, I'm trouble writing today. If I made this 125, real close to the one end still for motor one so it'd be nearly going full speed in the opposite direction of when it was set for 50. so it's just simply a matter of setting this byte motor control to whatever value you want depending upon the motor you want to control the direction you want to move and the speed you want to move and then sending that byte using your serial command well i hope that was helpful and you understanding on how to use the saber tooth with the arduino Thank you.